Hi, I am Brian Eisenhower, and I'm here with Ron Henderson, Mike Gunzelman, and Edie Waters, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about conveying the value of a real estate team in a listing presentation. Um, and oftentimes, you know, in competitive listing consultations, um, where uh, numerous agents will appear and provide a presentation to a seller, um, how do we use the, the fact that you've got a real estate team to win that listing? Um, how can we overcome objections to having a real estate team against maybe a solo or individual agent as well too? Um, so we're here to talk with three, uh, three guys that run very successful real estate teams um, who I've had the pleasure of working with for quite some time and what are the different things they say, present, show and do in those listing consultations to convey the value and make sure they get the listings and to ultimately get the, the transactions <laughs> sold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what are some things we do guys? Um, what are, you know, what, what what do you do to kind of show the value you guys have in those listing presentations? Well, several things that uh, that we do with with our listing presentation on the Gunsman team is that we have all these teams have photos for their listing presentation to introduce the teams. Uh, well, I take that time when I'm explaining to a seller what our team does. I'm also weaving in my own personal weaknesses uh, that bring <laughs> on my team's strengths. Uh, so when I tell a seller, I'm not going to be the one, going to be the one that writes the contract for you. Oh God, no! We don't um, want you doing that, Mike. I'd rather I'm a type of guy. I'd rather be writing it on a napkin and being done with it yeah. and saying, "Hey, okay, you're under contract." Uh, that's where I explain, "Hi, we have a, a listing manager that's going to be writing the contract for you and introducing herself to the team." Uh, so that way, you understand you're getting several people to sell your house and not just a single agent to do it. You have a team of specialists then. Exactly. So, so you actually go into the listing presentation and bring out all your weaknesses. Yeah. And one by one show how different members of the team yeah. actually cover those weaknesses to turn the weaknesses into an advantage. And it helps you introduce them to the team and set that expectation later that these people are going to be working with. Look at it. If they're, if they're hiring or interviewing other agents and I've already told them my weaknesses and told them how I can combat those weaknesses, it's pretty hard to say no to that. That's true because the other agents aren't doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and it actually gets them thinking about wonder how the other agent or the solo agent is going to get that done. Mm -hmm. So what do you got? You have like bios with photos of all these people yes, out front? We We've got a listing packet that has our team photo on it and then it explains what every uh, person does on our team. And I think that's crucial because so often they're, they're thinking, well, the concern is I'm going to get passed off to somebody else in the office. Right. And that's not the case. You guys are a team and this shows that you're a team. Mm -hmm. It's yes. not just somebody else in the office. You guys work together, you communicate together, everyone will know what's going on in right. that. So I really like that. I like how you lead with the weaknesses to actually cover with them and actually make it a positive too. Yeah. And Lord knows that must take a good couple hours for Mike. He's got a lot of weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when you're yeah. going, when you're going into the house, <laughs> long I, I can contribute to those weaknesses yeah. for you if you like. Yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> you can help me. Yeah. Well, excellent. So, what Thanks, do you guys? guys. What do you? <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys do? <laughs> oh, you know, we're more of a relationship team, um, and I think that's probably because I'm a woman. Uh, but what we do is we ask them at the time, well, what does your, how does your family run? Oh, well, I do the grocery shop, and he stops at the store. He does the plumbing and works on the electrical. The kids pick up their room. I said, that's what we do, except we do it for your real estate and for selling your home. Mm -hmm. And so we're a family just like your family is. Everybody has their jobs. Yeah, we don't, want, we don't want your five-year-old doing the plumbing. No. No, we don't want the five-year-old, and, and so the, the more difficult jobs, that's my job, to be in networking, to be selling your home, talking to buyers and other agents, while the team is responsible for doing the paperwork and the weaknesses, much like Mike has, doing those weaknesses that I'm not good at. That's excellent. I love it. Ron, what do you think? Same thing like Mike. I have a listing presentation that just basically shows all the pictures and job titles and what everybody does, and I kind of quickly go through them and explain to them. Uh, what we all do. I mean, one of the things that I quite often will say to somebody, if I, if, if they're not used to working with a team in the past, sometimes there's a little bit of an over, you know, uh, something to overcome in their mind anyway. So I'll say things like, um, so if I gave you the option, Brian, of hiring one agent to sell your home or five agents to sell your home, and the mm -hmm. five agents weren't going to cost you any more than the one agent, which one would you pick? Yeah, that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Like most people are going to say, well, of course I would pick the five agents. Okay, well then that's what we're doing for you. Yeah. It doesn't cost you any more money, yet you're getting a team of specialists to sell your home. That is phenomenal. That's mm -hmm. a simple question. It's very hard to deny right, that one. Right. 
Um, no, I like that one. And there's another one that you had talked about earlier about um, trying to play on their past experience. With yeah, and, and I don't want to assume that they had good or bad experiences with their previous agent. So just to overcome that, what I'll say many times is in the conversation, I will say, so when you guys bought this home, tell me, what was there some things that you weren't crazy about that the agent did before? Were they lacking in anywhere? They almost always have something. And usually the number one thing that I hear quite often is they will say, um, well, you know, she didn't call us back very often. We didn't really know what was going on. And I'll kind of help them through that and say, so, so she was lacking in communication skills. Is it? Okay, well, that's not going to happen on my team because all I'm doing is focusing on selling your home. I'm not doing the marketing initiatives and running that department. I'm not handling all of the paperwork shuffle. I'm not putting a buyer in my car and driving them around for three hours. All I do is literally focus on selling my listings and you're one of them. So you're gonna get calls back from me very quickly. I have a lot of time to focus on selling your home. That won't happen again because of the team. Right. I actually love right. that. Um, that's great. Okay, so uh, excellent, uh, every one of you. Um, do you guys ever get any objections um, from people? Because I hear a lot of fear out there um, from agents, from solo agents. I don't want to be a team because my clients just need me. Um, and they don't want to be passed on to somebody else. Um, do you ever encounter many objections to the team? Or do I, I don't personally. I haven't gotten that. Um, I just, Edie and I talked about this and Mike, and I just don't. I always say that when I am reading on these different blog posts or Facebook groups where real estate agents are talking about that and they're saying, well, my clients always want to work with me. I'll say, well, one, I think that's just your head trash because <laughs> that's not true. And secondly, if they're saying that to you, I think that you're not conveying the value of the team good enough up front. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's a huge selling point. Yeah. But if you don't set the expectation and use the selling point, right. it becomes a big negative later. You take a huge positive. Because they're just going to assume that you're, you're here and then they're going, you're going to get passed on. Right. Then you else. get passed on, it's going to not be received well. Right. But right. I know that if it is explained up front and they do hear the statement like, would you rather have one agent selling your home or five? Right. I'm terrified if I'm a solo agent and I have to go up against that. I'm terrified. It would be hard. Right. Yeah, that would be very tough. Um, and uh, if I'm the next guy, oh, it's just me, <laughs> you know. Um, and you better have like four arms and five legs or something, because I, I don't know how it's going to happen. Right. Um, but it could be a negative. We don't explain it up front. We don't use it as a marketing point, as a value add, and set the expectations. These are good expectations when you have other people handling the transaction. That means more people are working with you. Right, right. So, excellent. Well, guys, thank you so much for your time here today. I really appreciate sure. that, sharing your secrets with us again. So, Absolutely. thanks, guys.